Hi, and welcome to the 18th video in our C Sharp for Beginner video series. In the last few videos, we've taken a look at arrays and multidimensional arrays. Today, we're going to be taking at the look at the last type of array, which is called a jagged array or jagged array. Uh, so this is going to be very similar to a two-dimensional array. Uh, but as we saw, like the two-dimensional arrays, we had like a set number of columns, a set number of rows, uh, which basically kind of made always like a grid or a square uh, rectangle shape array. Um, or of course, in the three dimensions, we also covered as well. But this is going to look more like a two dimensional array. But in this case, uh, we can actually have different row sizes or different amount of columns for each row. Uh, so we're going to see that and we're going to see the two ways to initialize a jagged array um, or jagged array and also see how to iterate through them uh, since it's a little tricky if you're not used to it at the beginning, but it is quite similar again to the two dimensional arrays that we've seen in the last video. So actually let's get started. So the first way that we can actually initialize a jagged array here is very similar again to all the other arrays that we've done. Uh, so this one is gonna be an int and then a open closing square bracket and then a second open closing square bracket. So this is basically going to be a tr very traditional, I kind of hinted towards this in the multi-dimensional arrays where we were seeing arrays inside of arrays. Now a two-dimensional array declared that in the two dimensions isn't actually an array inside of an array, um, but the jagged arrays are fully, um, it is a one array and then each element of that array is another array and they could all be different sizes. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's just take a look at that. So let's create this as a jagged array here. And we're just going to name it jagged array. And we are going to make that equal to a new int square bracket, square bracket, and then a semicolon. Now here we're going to see that we need a number in the first square bracket. Now this is going to initialize that initial array size. Um, so think about like this, if we have an array here, um, which is going to be, so an array, uh, let's put this in a comment just so it looks a little different. So an array, we will have an element here. So we have element at zero, one, and two, and three. A jagged array would be, uh, jagged array would be an array. And then we'll actually have another array and then another array, and then another array. And this is going to be array 0, array 1, and then array 2. And then in here, we would also have 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and then 0, 1, and 2. Um, so this is very, very similar to uh, two-dimensional arrays, as you could probably see already. Um, but whereas the two-dimensional arrays, these actually weren't um specified like individual arrays so let's actually take a look at that a little bit more here now uh, so let's initialize this jagged array here to have a size of four so to actually populate this jagged array because right now we just have an array of arrays of size four so if we actually do a uh, jagged array at index zero and we're going to make that equal to a new int and then a square bracket here and now we could put in our elements so here we're going to put in one two and three so this means that we have an array at index zero and that in that array contains numbers one two and three and we can actually keep going here so we're going to have the jagged array at index one we're going to make that be an array of four, five, six, and seven. And then we're going to have another array here at index two. And we're actually going to make this one just have the number eight. And then we're going to have our last index here, which is going to be equal to nine and 10. So as you can see, all of these arrays are all of different sizes, um, but we're not getting any errors. Now, if we wanted to actually print out one of these elements, it is very, very similar, uh, again, to a two-dimensional arrays. The only thing that's really different is we don't have a comma separating the two numbers. The two numbers are just in their separate 
uh, square brackets. So let's actually just do a console dot right line and let's do a oops um, jagged array and let's try printing out the number three here. So we know that the number three is at index zero for the first box and then this is going to be zero one and two so it's going to be zero two and let's just do a few here before we actually test it out so let's do two more uh, let's try printing out the number six here um, so that's actually let's do number five uh, so number five is going to be on the first index here and then for this one, it's also going to be on the first index because zero and one. And let's do number eight. So eight would be two and zero. So let's actually just make sure that we are correct here. So we have three, five, and eight. So as you can see, it's very similar again to the two dimensional arrays. The only thing that's slightly different is um, the way to write it out and the way to declare them as they are actual arrays inside of an array. And they could be different sizes. Um, we don't actually have to have all of them the same size. So that is one way of declaring a jagged array. Now there is another way. Uh, so if we do an int square bracket, square bracket again, and let's just call this jagged array uh, two, and we're going to make that equal to a new int square bracket square bracket, and we're going to do an open and closing curly bracket. So we've seen this notation again when we're just declaring a array where we're just declaring the array and then do an open and closing curly bracket to declare variables right away. Now, if we try doing it the exact same way that we did the two dimensional arrays, which was just like this, where we just had um, basically other curly brackets and then commas, we're actually going to get uh, some red squigglies. And this is because we need to initialize the array here. So we need to do a new int square bracket for each one. Now, as you can see, that makes the, uh, the red curly brackets disappear. And then in here, we can actually initialize our array. So let's do uh, one, two, three, four, five in this one. Uh, let's do six, seven in this one, and eight, nine, and ten. So once again, we all have different sizes in each array. Um, so this would be a three here, and then this one. Uh, so it's because it's a length of three for the first item, and then for the second item, the first one has a length of five, two, and then three again. So how can we actually loop? through these. Um, and just to show you guys uh, once again how you can actually just iterate through them. So if we actually picked the same indexes because all these actually exist as well, um, we will see. So let me just console write line um, and let me just write out here uh, first jagged array and let me just copy this line over here and we are gonna put the second jagged array. So if we actually output this here, we're gonna see we get three, seven, and eight. And that is because our first element is zero, two, so it's gonna be zero and then two, so zero, one, two, so we have three. Uh, one and one, so one, and then one is seven, and then eight, which is two, zero, so two and zero is eight. So again, very, very easy to kind of follow, very similar to the two dimensional arrays. Um, I would say you can use this pretty interchangeably with two dimensional arrays um, for your situations, like especially if you're creating a tic-tac-toe game or something, uh, you can definitely use a jagged array instead of a two dimensional array. Both will work uh, perfectly fine. Uh, just the way of writing it out would be slightly different. So now if we actually want to iterate through these arrays, uh, now that might be what we might think is a little difficult because we don't have set sizes, but that is okay because we can use the dot length notation like we've seen in the other arrays. So uh, let's iterate through the second jag, jagged array here. So let's do a for int i equals zero. 
and then i is going to be less than jagged array 2 dot length and then we're going to do a semicolon and then i plus plus for our increment now this is going to do this element here um, because we are in the first length here now if we actually did this and we just want to see what it looks like um, so let me actually just add another console right line before our for loop and let's just write a for loop iterate jagged array and let's just see what our first for loop does here so let's just do a console dot right line and let's do a interpolated string here and let's say i'm index and then let's put our i here so if we actually just do this we will see i'm index 0 1 and 2 and as we can see this is exactly what we would expect because it is of length 3 so this iterates through the first um, sets of rows and then the second box will actually iterate through um, each row so let's actually add in our for loop here so we're going to do a for int j equals zero and then our j is going to be less than jagged array two and we're going to do an open and close square bracket our i variable dot length and then j plus plus for our increment now the reason why we are doing this is every time that we are going through this first for loop so the first iteration will be zero so if we take jagged array two we put in the zero we are going to get this array here so we want the length for this and this is going to be a length five and we're going to look through every element and then we're going to go into the next iteration i is going to become one and then we're going to be here the length for this one is actually only two so we're going to go through it two times and then so on uh, for as long as your jagged arrays are so let's actually do a console dot right line and let's just write out the uh, jagged array i and j here and let's don't forget our semicolon here so if we actually run this here we're going to say the for loop so index zero so in our first column we have one two three four five in our our index number one we have six seven and index two we have eight nine and ten so if we actually just remove this and we look at that now we will see that we just have our full jagged array in order and it doesn't matter how long each of these um, rows are or arrays are we will be able to iterate through each one doesn't matter how many items we have here so if we add a new one here we have new int and we have items 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 and 20 and let's go ahead and let's run that we will see that our for loop completely works gets all of our elements all the way up to 20. so that is pretty much it for all the different types of arrays in c sharp next up we're going to be looking at a couple other different collections before doing our c sharp console project uh, which is going to be making the tic-tac-toe game uh, i find like that's pretty good because it's going to be taking in user input we're going to be using some uh, multi-dimensional or jagged arrays depending on which way you want to write it out and we're just going to be looking at a lot of different sort of logic some loops and that should cover everything that we've learned here in the beginner series. And then we could take a look at some more advanced topics and some GUIs and start using maybe our APIs that we've created with PowerShell um, if the community wants it. Once again, if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below in the comment section. If it's something that I think a lot of people can benefit, I will create a video. If it's something a little bit more specific, I'll just answer you directly. If you liked this video, please hit that subscribe button and the like button. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.